Hi, I'm Glenn Darcy, Vice President of Product Management for Arturia. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about using Minilab with Ableton Live. Okay, so today what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to use the Minilab within Ableton Live. Now first thing you're going to need to do is go to our website www.arturia.com and go look under the mini lab section it, you'll find that under the hybrid synthesizers and go to the resources page and within the resources page you'll see that there's a area where you can download uh, an Ableton Live script um, and you can open up the PDF and that will show you the, basically the same uh, information that you're going to get here within this video um, but follow that because that will give you the, uh, the exact places, locations to to drag the files into on your computer. First thing we're going to do is we've got the mini lab plugged in and so I'm going to go up into live I'm going to click on preferences and I'm going to choose MIDI sync. So within here I'm going to go up to control surface Now what you can do is after you have that uh, that file installed correctly you'll see Arturia mini lab shows up. On your input go choose mini lab and on the output Arturia mini lab now also on the mini lab I like to have my uh, remote and track settings turned on here. So now that I have that, I've really got this thing connected. And uh, what you'll see is these eight encoders down here are all set up for track level controls by default. So if you see on screen I've got four different uh, tracks going. So you see these first four knobs will go to those. If I add some more tracks, then you'll see uh, I've got all eight that are, uh, are working here. And let's go directly to some of the control functions. So these control the first eight tracks worth of, of volume levels. These eight knobs control specific devices. Now each device within Ableton, each instrument, each effect, uh, everything already has mapping for controls and you'll see up here we'll go select a thing I threw into drum rack it's just one of their stock kits called the kit core 808 and what you'll see is that the pads auto map to the first eight eight pads within a uh, kit now when I move up to the next uh, section of kit you'll see that those go to the next eight pads up into the next group and so on and so forth. So that will automatically remap those notes. Now what you have beyond that is if I click on it here you'll see this purple hand shows up. Uh, the purple hand means that that device that you have currently selected is under the control of the the, the pre-mapped controllers. So if we open up this uh, a little bit Let's uh, choose an 808. 808 kick here. If you look, I've got that selected within this. And now these eight knobs automatically map to the eight controls that are pre-assigned to that in here. Same thing if I go to a rim shot. Now it's adjusting the rim shot controls. If I go to snare, it adjusts the snare controls. So on and so forth. It automatically will map to you all these things. Similarly, uh, if I open up one of their other instruments, like uh, here I've got the operator. If I choose, if I do the old handy choose thing here, um, you'll see that these eight knobs now are controlling the ADSR of the first uh, envelope, or actually, yeah, the first one here. And you see these four are changing parameters within the, uh, the four controls here, velocity, level, fine tune, and coarse tune. Now one thing that you can do on the second set of bank, uh, pad banks is that we've set these up for all the transport controls and these two are for device selections. So by pushing these you'll see that there's a, a green text that shows up at the bottom and that green text shows you what's being selected. So in the case of operator as I do this you'll see it going from oscillator D, oscillator C, oscillator B, oscillator A. 
So those, that's what these knobs are controlling. So if I go to B and I turn these knobs, now you'll see that the coarse, fine, and uh, ADSR of, of B is uh, being edited. Um, so here, let's go to an envelope where we can actually see it. Now if I, uh, I can choose C, nothing happens. Until I go select it, now I'm choosing C and I'm editing C. You can keep on going in this thing, it'll go into the LFO controls. Um, so you'll see amount controls, rate controls, wave shapes. You can go into the filter controls, pitch modulation. Each instrument's going to be a little bit different. If we go up in here, I'll pull down an audio effect, one of my favorites, filter delay. And you see we've got the hand. We go here, now we've got the hand here. Go here, we've got it here. And you'll see that it automatically maps to the filter delay controls here. So this is very handy. If I just uh, move into the next bank, you'll see it goes to the left-right filter. Now it goes to the right filter. So it's all very handy. So further than that, now you can go into controlling other instruments, third-party plugins. So I'm going to use Profit V here. Now you can see I've got it selected, and you've got the purple hand. But nothing is assigned at this point. If I open up this uh, triangle here, you'll see that there's nothing here. It says to add plug-in parameters to this panel, click the Configure button. So we want to add which controls in Profit V we want to control. So we click Configure, and now I just simply go through and click the different controls I want. So I'm going to click those eight, and then maybe I'll click uh, my mixer things, maybe throw Glide in there, do some ADSR controls. Um, Polymod, LFO, um, let's just click on a whole bunch of things here. So you can see I've got a lot of devices uh, that are now assigned. All I have to do is deselect configure, and now these are all assigned, automatically assigned to all the knobs. You can see these are the uh, ADSR of the filter. Now if I shift the banks, you'll see down here on the screen it just says Bank 2 because it really doesn't have a name for anything. So um, Bank 2 in this case we assigned the mixer controls, I did the other ADSR over here. If I shift again you can see Bank 3, I'll go into the polymod controls. So you can see that all of this thing is now configured. And once again, all I have to do is go to the other tracks, click on the device, and this one's now configured. So it's a really uh, handy thing to have. Be able to have uh, all your devices uh, pretty much auto map here when you use them. Um, once again, within the third party devices, you have to map the controls yourself, but it's really very simple. You just hit configure, choose the things you want, and then it's done. Okay, so now I was showing you the pad banks. Of course, pad bank 1 through 8, those pads are just regular MIDI notes. In the second bank, I've shown you the device controls. Now the rest of these over here are all for transport functions. So this is loop on, loop off. This one, or these three, uh, play, stop, and record. So that's your play, stop, record, stop. It's your fast forward, and here's your rewind. And then once again, these two are your device controls for the eight knobs. So once again, Minilab works great with Ableton. Download the Ableton scripts from our website. Remember, it's www.arturia.com. And go to the uh, Hybrid Instruments Minilab. Look under the Resources page. You'll see that script there. There's a PDF that says the same things that this video said and shows you the directory paths for installing them. That's it. Enjoy.